Hey, Maria, back with another video. It's 4.20, and I'm just playing around with my camera. But, you know, I'm going to make an appearance on my video. I haven't done it in a while. And um, so this is my computer that I've been using. So it's pretty new, and so I'm just getting familiar with it. The last few videos I made on my computer, and, um, you know, it looks a little different, you know, but it's okay. Um, <clears throat> so it's um, June 20th. And it's Thursday afternoon, 4.21 p.m. now. <clears throat> and I was just kind of doing some thinking. I make this hat here. Um, I usually don't like my hats um, inside my house. Like when I'm inside my house by myself, I usually just let my hair go or whatever. But um, <clears throat> when I'm outside, I usually do wear a hat. Um, so I was thinking today about, um, you know, how things are played out in front of people's faces. And yet they don't understand or relate you know certain issues to you know things that they're supposed to be trained on you know like I was talking earlier about um, sexual harassment how you know they give you examples of sexual harassment but sometimes it just doesn't click you know and um, I remember talking to a manager one time and he was saying that you know he got in some sort of you know riff or something with a former employee because this woman accused him of sexual harassment and see, when people think of sexual harassment, they think, well, you know, I didn't come on to her, I didn't back her into any corners, I didn't do this, I didn't touch her, I didn't do these sort of things. But sometimes sexual harassment is basically implying things or, um, you know, with, with lewd comments or um, creating a sort of tension and, and friction in the workplace. And there's many forms of sorry, sexual harassment, and there's several different examples of it um, that they provide. But yeah, it just, they don't connect the dots, you know. And so I, I was also thinking how, um, you know, men are not necessarily always responsible for sexual harassment. Sometimes women can sexually harass another woman, not necessarily in a sexual manner, like they're desiring these people or anything, but it's more like they are um, teasing, taunting, maybe you might hear women um, talking, gossiping, referring to a particular woman as, you know, any sort of lewd, uh, uh, negative, uh, what do you call it? A negative name like slut or whore or something along those lines. Um, because this creates, you know, um, a, a, a hostile environment for that particular person, that could actually be considered sexual harassment, you know? And so, um, you know, in my case, um, I believe that <laughs> this, this Lyle's plan, um, the mother of this Lyle's clan um, has been um, creating this sort of tension and and um, saying things about me um, without really knowing me. I, I don't know her. I, I, she probably remembers me when I was a you know teenage girl having a crush on her son um, many many years ago, and that's pretty much all she knows about me. Um, and so sometimes you know. I mentioned the stalking issue as well. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised that this has been going on this long, no matter how many times I've mentioned it. Uh, and I've actually made it so many statements and comments, uh, I would say in the last month or so, talking about how I really didn't want to have anything to do with these people. And um, But yet, they still persist. And this woman still had the ability to manipulate the situation to where I was getting a phone call from this particular person yesterday. Um, you know, when you make a comment about a woman, you know, there's nothing wrong with complimenting people like, her. oh, I like your dress, you know, but when you start saying, oh, she's wearing this dress because she's doing this, she's doing that, she's, you know, whatever, um, most of the time women do wear dresses or pants, you know, either one, you know, and if you have, most women have both items in their wardrobe, and they have, you know, dresses, skirts, pants or whatever, and it, and then when this gossip starts going on, like I remember when I was over at the farmer's place, it was like I'd wear pants one day and then the gossip talking about me wearing pants. And then I'd switch it up to wearing a skirt, you know, because it's cooler. I mean, like, you know, it, it gets hot in those trailers, right? Oh, she's wearing this. It, it, this sort of stuff, okay, is what escalates sexual harassment, okay? And so this particular manager that said, you know, I, I, I wasn't really guilty of sexual harassment. He was pretty confident that he wasn't guilty of sexual harassment but looking back he probably was guilty of sexual harassment and it's very easy to fall into that and it's not to say that you know I'm not a person that's you know 
nitpicky. I'm not the kind of person that, you know, gets my feelings hurt easily or offended easily because, you know, I, I realize, you know, people will be people, okay? But when you take it to a certain level, like in the level that it, it was taken, and um, that's when it, it gets to be a little too much. You know, um, you know, I compliment women on their clothes all the time, you know. Of course, I don't really see any other women, you know, because I'm not around anyone. But if I see somebody with a nice dress or something, because I have an appreciation for those things, or, you know, just because. I mean, you know, if a person looks nice, it, it's, it's pleasant to see. It's like, you know, you look nice today, okay. But oftentimes sexual harassment can be lingering, walking around somebody's desk over and over again, such as what happened to me, you know, over at the farmer's place. And it actually happened over in um, organized sports, too. And so this can make a person ill, okay? And it really did. Like, when, when it was going on over at Karen's place, I, I left for that reason. You know, not just that reason, but it was the fact that, you know, her accounts receivable clerk was a goddamn nightmare. There were people gossiping about me and talking about me, and it could have been about the Stephen Lyles issue, and I, I had no idea. You know, I had no idea at all. You know, I had no knowledge of him being there. But see, all of this stuff, and even the talking of gossip and talking about your relate people's so-called relationships or whatever, um, and then people conjuring up these ideas in their mind could eventually. There's nothing wrong with talking about people's relationship. Oh, she's married to so and so. She's you know engaged to so and so. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? But when it can escalate to, you know, this sort of harassment. That's when it becomes a problem, you know? So I was also thinking about, you know, um, how scary it is becoming, um, not just in the workplace, but just in, in certain organizations that are supposed to be skilled. Like, for example, the human resource person. As well as, um, I know, um, maybe about six months ago, I think it was, um, there was somebody that I contacted regarding human trafficking here in town. I believe it was the, the organization that's supposed to be, you know, about human trafficking, human the human trafficking, um, Kern County Association for Human Trafficking or something like that. And, you know, this particular person didn't seem like she was interested in talking to me. What she doesn't understand is she probably thought, oh, well, I know who that person is. Everybody in town knows who she is. She's got this Stephen Lyles people coming around her and she's got, you know, the, the mothers involved, her family's involved. And blah blah blah, and she's probably making a big deal out of nothing. Those are the exact components that make up a, a victim of human trafficking. Okay, you know the reason why one of the, the signs of a person who is being um, trafficked is somebody who's in isolation, who's working jobs that are below their skill level, or you know working for tips. I mean, I, I haven't gotten that bad yet, but you know just menial jobs um, and people who are you know basically socially isolated, people who. Um, are basically are not being able to ac ac have access to the resources that they need okay so in her mind she was probably thinking oh well you know she's making a big deal out of nothing these it, it's what puts a person in isolation are these sort of lies and the manipulative tactics that these people use in order to make a person a trafficked person this is what causes it okay so yet I was sitting here basically crying out for help and this particular organization just didn't recognize it see and th this is my issue is that these people don't understand you know so who are these people who get to occupy these positions and so when you look at this situation you become I mean I become terrified because really who who can you trust you know um, human trafficking affects many people most, most of the time it is for sex trafficking well no I'm sorry most of the time it's actually for labor trafficking okay and that's the most common one and you know some people may not think that it's a big deal okay oh labor trafficking is nothing but when you're not allowed to live your life to your full potential um, and probably because it doesn't affect you but imagine this imagine you had a daughter that was getting ready to graduate from college and you were talking about it on Facebook for example you're talking about it on Facebook you know she's got this lined up she's got this lined up I'm so proud of her you know you know how people brag about their kids right okay and then all of a sudden there's been people who are stalking you know your Facebook page and everything else so they're finding out what this girl's trying to do and guess what she gets to be in this program okay this, this sort of thing can happen to anybody at any time, okay? And um, oftentimes, you know, when this particular person from this this organization, this human trafficking organi organization, and I talk fast because, you know, I don't have this script or anything, and, and, and I get a little nervous in front of the camera, but um, oftentimes when people are trafficked, they're trafficked by 
family members, um, people that they're close to, um, and they're put in this exact situation, but yet nobody recognizes it, you know? So it, it, it is terrifying, and you don't have the, the uh, support that you're, you're, you need. Like I've told, you know, Karen several times, get these people out of my life. I told uh, one of my employers, my ex-employer, uh, his name was, um, my hand looks distorted and this, this angle is just really weird. Um, I, I told uh, the guy I worked for at the manufactured homes place that I was being um, stalked, okay? And once again, he probably was like, well, these are family members. This is exactly it. Okay, your family members are domestic stalkers. Okay, these people are coming in to my workplace or arranging my job. Does it seem fair that somebody would be able to do such a thing? You know, especially when I say, you know, hey, I've told Karen several times through my videos that I have no knowledge of these people doing that and I certainly would have never given my consent to do so. You know, but it was like no big deal. Okay, so these crimes get committed over and over and over again, and the innocent person is sitting here upset, crying, and doing whatever. Luckily, I really don't cry physical tears, but I'm basic. I was basically crying out for my life, like you know, please, I don't do this. I don't want this. You know, these people have limited my ability to live out my life. Like, for example, what if I wanted to retire into a different state? Or what if I wanted to move to a different state? I can't do that. I don't have the, you know, the ability to do the things that I wanted to do or if I will ever do choose to do so because of this issue. So they, they, they completely reduce the quality of life. And this is the, 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 um, this is one of the, the things that makes a person, uh, a trafficked individual, you know? Um, uh, so, um, you know, when you, when you think about how, you know, I, I think about the lawyer in, went in my hometown who was involved in this too, obviously, because, you know, I was getting all kinds of flack when I was living in Lancaster and who's supposed to be, a, you know, employment lawyer. And I, I keep thinking to myself, my God, you know, this is a scary world we're living in. We are living in a very scary world. We've got like, you know, people um, being trafficked in front of people's face. This, this, this horrible crime being committed in broad daylight and people are not even paying attention they're not paying attention as a matter of fact somehow or another they still have the the perpetrators still have access and the ability to continue doing what they're doing and so that's one of the reasons why I made this the videos telling Karen get these people out of my life okay you're the employer you were you know my employer okay um, you allowed this, you orchestrated, you were part of it. You're the one who left the comment on my LinkedIn page about the customer service bullshit. So since I didn't want to be a part of this little entourage, do something about it, okay? So it took me by surprise to get this, you know, in a job interview. You know, and I will tell you, just about all the ads that I've ever looked at, you know, I'm always sick to my stomach. And I'm always in the back of my mind thinking, I don't know if this is true or not. Should I even bother? And I really... I needed to update my resume anyway. I really did. And I wanted a different format and everything for it. But, um, so I'm, I'm not saying that it was completely a waste of time. But I'm saying is, is that I can't trust things like Indeed.com. I don't, Indeed.com posts a lot of fake job ads. Just like, you know, all the other ones. You know, they're, they're all like, you know, a swarming with perpetrating activity. I just also got a um, email this morning after making my, um, well, actually, I didn't get it this morning. I actually got it last night. It was marked about 9.34 p.m., a little after I made my video. And it was another company that was letting me know at 9 p.m. at night, you know, coincidentally after I made my last video um, about how um, the, the position that they were offering was closed. But probably because they wanted to absolve themselves from the guilt, or they just don't want to look guilty, but their actions kind of show that they're guilty, you know? Um, you know, when you when you do this sort of stuff to people, and you don't really look at the whole scenario, it's like, why would I want to comply with people that I don't really know? Just because I sort of kind of knew these people in high school, doesn't mean I want to be a part of them now, okay? Just because I had a crush on this guy in high school, doesn't you know, mean that now that I have full knowledge of who and what he is, that I want to have anything to do with him now, you know? Um, and I think my sister, Tanya, <laughs> I was thinking about her this morning. I was like, what a fucking bitch, an idiot, idiot, okay? Some people, I, I get the feeling that she's the kind of person that, um, <laughs> 
to be with somebody just anybody like some people just they can't bear being alone they I would prefer being alone seriously I would prefer being alone all my life than to be in a relationship that I I'm with with a dominating person that I really deep down inside I can't stand but maybe I don't know why people choose to be in couples uh, when they're not really emotionally satisfied okay obviously I would never be emotionally satisfied in an in an incestuous family I wouldn't you know because to me there's certain things that I hold sacred and there's certain things that I look at that's form of defilement now I'm not trying to cause a debate I know that there's a lot of people probably in this town that you know kind of turn a blind eye to incest and they probably participate in themselves if you're a consenting adult like I said feel free to do what you want okay but that's my personal preference I don't like it I would feel demeaned I would feel dirty I would feel a lot of shame to be a part or associated with something like that so maybe she thought that I was going to be with him anyway like you know after I've already mentioned the fact that you know I was fearful of this Elsie Lyles woman just because of what I personally think she did to her husband so why I, I made that video not too short not too long ago okay so that should have like cleared it up right there I don't want anything to do with this woman okay but somehow or another do they think that I'm so weak for Stephen Lyles that I'm gonna just be like well that's okay only a weak person such as my sister Tanya would accept something like that I will not accept anything like that you know and I'm sure there's people who, who are in these sort of relationships or whatever and maybe they do fulfill, fulfill some sort of need or whatever and that's that's fine for them but I don't want it I really don't so yeah I'm a targeted individual I am a victim of human trafficking okay uh, of forced labor is what I am and there's many people I was reading an article a few years ago uh, before I actually put the connection uh, the dots that I myself was a victim of human trafficking but they were talking about how common this is in Bakersfield now some of these people may not realize that they're being trafficked okay some of these people um, they, they never thought about it but if they look back they might be able to remember wait a second this kind of happened it just kind of coincidentally fell into place and all these other issues some people you know some trafficking might be not I'm not saying it's a good thing okay because it's not if it's something that works to their benefit like for example um, they want to get some sort of internship so somebody manipulates things behind the strings to make that happen okay but oftentimes when these people get behind your employment it's not just about employment they're using this opportunity to spy on you to gather information about you um, and then also they use it in their mind their twi their sick little twisted mind as a means to control you okay so Mar we don't like what Maria is wearing so I gave her this job even though she has no knowledge of it but I gave her this job so therefore I'm going to do this 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 and this and she goddamn better well it you know comply to with what I say and I'm gonna use force I'm gonna use other people around me to get this job done okay that's abuse all right it's abuse and uh, really um, I, I never wanted to be accountable to anybody when it came to my employment when I was first moved here I came here I was like in my 30s okay like early 30s was I even 30 yeah I think I just turned 30 and <clears throat> I was you know just ready to do whatever I mean it's not wasn't too far from home I want to stay kind of close to Lancaster and come out here and just build a little life and I knew the, con the, the cost of living was pretty inexpensive and I felt I had, was confident that I could do it my own I never said you know could you guys do this for me could you guys help me out I never wanted to do that so all these years these people have been like eating up my life not the just the Lyles family but like my blood relations or whatever which I never asked them to do and those people too they set up the job and you know they wanted to get to know me spy on me you know you know and then they want to do things to try to manipulate and control me <clears throat> so that's the biggest issue <clears throat> when it comes to human trafficking you know it's not because they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart oftentimes there's an agenda behind it there is an agenda behind it and you know when it's funny because these are these jobs were arranged you know and when I was over at the farmers place I did a damn good job for the farmer I mean and I was given opportunity responsibilities and I would consider them to be opportunities but they would decide to squash all that but then I was given responsibilities that were outside of my field of expertise but I handled them well you know 
And the thing is, is that when they find out that you're actually good at your job, then they become a little threatened, like, well, pff, I can't let her have all that. I can't let her do that. You know, so then they want to yank it all away. Or they think they can legally, but they can't, really. But, of course, you know, this woman, Elsie, seems like she's got people wrapped around her little finger. I don't know why. Maybe because she's white. Who knows? Uh, maybe because they think that I was trying to steal her love interest, her son, and because some people are incestuous, they back her up. I, I really don't know. I have no idea. You know, um, yeah, I, I am psychic, okay? I mean, I would have never been able to figure out what was going on. I mean, I knew that my family, I left my family's house in 2014. No, 2015. I moved in towards a little after Christmas. Yeah, a little after Christmas, I was standing at my mom's house. And then I got a job in the Los Angeles area, and my sister, Lisa, was starting to act very strange. Her whole mannerism changed, like, and I kept thinking, she's up to something. She even pretended that she was crying over the phone, and I knew it was for crocodiles, you know, and I became scared, so I came back here, you know, and I was terrified of, of that, because I realized that my own family was basically willing to put me in an early grave, you know, and whether they realize it or not, when you mess around, with somebody's employment through using the use of you know person rumors um, and starting campaigns hate campaigns smear campaigns you are basically setting the wheels in motion for this person um, their demise that's exactly what you're doing okay that's one of the reasons why confidentiality is supposed to be of the utmost importance in every business for this reason to protect employees okay and also mainly of course to protect the reputation of the company Okay, but because if you don't, if you're the kind of person that's running your mouth about certain employees and causing, you know, or allowing these kind of environments to exist in your workplace, then that looks down on your, rep, your, rep, your reputation. Okay, but whatever, you know. So I'm seeing all these unprofessional people. I'm looking at this lawyer who doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, who, who just turns a blind eye. An employment lawyer, okay, mind you. You got this human resource person calling me, you know, who should know better. Um, you got, I call it passive aggressive stupidity who, who participated in this. I mean, and obviously I'm sitting here and I, and I wonder like, how, how, how does this happen? How does this happen? You know, I'm a trafficked in, individual. I, I'm in traffic, you know, and I'm the only person who I can rely on because you can't rely on the law, law, um, law enforcement. They're as corrupt as hell. I don't even want to interact with them. I really don't. Um, I, I, I could not rely on organizations like this human trafficking organization. I couldn't rely on them because they don't re they wouldn't recognize a trafficked person if it was right in front of their face, you know, obviously. Um, I, I don't, I, it's very hard for you, me, to trust people in the workplace. It's hard to trust social media, period, okay? I mean, the way that things are now, um, I mean, it's, it's always been corrupt, okay? But the use of these computers and people putting things on Facebook, I mean, do you realize that you might have family members who could easily be trafficked by a stalker and that's exactly what the Lyles family are they're stalkers you know um, I don't care if, if people thought that I was going to be with him I've already said many times I will not be in a relationship with somebody who is going to abuse me or take that sort of form of control with me I would not do it but yet somehow or another these people think well, you know, so you're basically trying to force me into doing something that I, it's like, it's, it's, it's almost like a form of rape is basically what it is. And that's also against the law when it comes to employment law. So I'm just like, you know, my, my mind is just like, wow, you know. So this morning I woke up, I actually went to bed pretty late last night. I went to bed close to, actually after 12 o'clock actually. And so I didn't get very much sleep, you know. And then I woke up this morning and I was like really groggy. But the first thing that came to my mind was like, my sister Tanya's weakness and how I have absolutely no respect for her. Um, I, I don't know <coughs> why she would think that. I, I think it's because of her her religious belief about, you know, um, being submissive and, and that sort of thing. And I do understand there's scriptural things about women being, um, uh, allowing the man to be in, in the head of the family. Okay, but number one, I didn't consent to being in, in anybody's family. Um, or having somebody take control of my life. Um, I've already said many times before, I would not be in a relationship that involved incest at, at all. Okay, I won't do it. If I know it's happening or whatever, I, 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 if I have full knowledge of it, I'm not going to do it. 
but yet these people still had their little hands in in my employment you know and, and and only a person who's weak and pathetic and just cannot live without a man is going to sit there and shrug their shoulders and say oh you know what it's not that big of a deal it is that big of a deal okay that's how I look at it and 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 you know like I said I'm not I'm not trying to bash people for their sexual preferences you know I'm a very open-minded person I, I think that hey if you want to do that that's fine really it is you, you do that especially if, if, if the people are over the age of 18 they're consenting adults you have the right to do whatever you want okay but it's not something that I believe in okay it's not something I want you know and to try to force and manipulate or I, if I'm begging say get these people away from me and you're allowing these people to continually be a part of my life then I feel violated I feel extremely violated you know I don't want these people in my life okay so and and that goes for all the other people that I used to know when I was growing up okay because I will tell you what if if I had any true friends I wouldn't be in this situation okay your friends just like the kind of ideal family are supposed to wish the best for you Okay, they're not going to sit here and take your life apart and tear it apart and give you shit and expect you to be happy. Okay, and these are the same people, you know, that like my family and everything, these are the same people who manipulate your life, cause all kinds of heartache, and then they want you to go to their house for dinner so they can sit there and be like all happy and have that little secret inside joke about how they fucked your life over. You know, so no, and this is it, and this is these, is these little things that like I'm explaining here is what makes that person a trafficked individual you know because the only way that they're able to do this is to use lies coercion and manipulation they use smeared campaigns to put somebody in this situation this is it right here okay like these these tar these trafficked or targeted individuals or these human victims of human trafficking they're not just victims of human trafficking there are certain things that go in place in order certain um components certain aspects of it that all get you know moshed together that make this okay you got a controlling family member you have a vindictive woman who's possessive of her son slash lover who can gain access to things like employment uh, and also it, it, uh, being a, a, a trafficked individual one of the indications is that they are their, their amount of freedom is limited okay my amount of freedom is limited I can't move anywhere I can't go anywhere I can't even find my own goddamn job all right so then you these organizations are to me like these Kern County human human, human um, trafficking organization I can't count on them either you know so who do you count on okay so I think people really should think about these issues just because it doesn't affect you doesn't mean it's not gonna affect your daughter your grandkids some year, some some years down the road because it could happen to anybody anybody can be in this situation you know to where their quality of life is limited you know and some people might look at me and think well I don't see anything I mean you you you, you have food you got clothes you know you look okay you're clean you're you're everything okay but I am not I am NOT free in my life I don't have access to things that I'm supposed to have that I have I have my God-given rights to that I have every right to as an American citizen too okay like I can't just jump in the car and be a free-spirited person jump in the car so you know what? I decided just you know because I felt like it that I want to move to I don't know um, God knows why I want to move to Arizona but let's just use Arizona as an example I want to move to Arizona I just decided that last week and I want to get in the car I want to move to Arizona I would go to Arizona and I would already be blocked from employment okay all because of some weird person and they always use lies in order to put a person in this situation so they might say oh it's because she's going to end up being with this particular guy they're going to get married or whatever but that's just a lie and then years go by and years go by and people are wondering well how come they're not together i thought they were getting together man he's taking a long time to come up to her he's not taking all this stuff but that was never the intention in the first place the intention was is to keep this person in a in a in a, in a uh, position of subordination you know and that's what it was for and that's how they use the, this is how they make victims of human trafficking is through their lies okay so there's a lot of um, 
uh, victims of human trafficking here in Kern County, they may not even realize it because maybe things are going good for them right now. Okay. Maybe things are going good for them right now, but you do something, step out of line of your, um, of, of the person that who gave you that job. Like maybe you might want to marry somebody that they don't like. Maybe you want to, um, you want to identify with a particular political affiliation. Maybe you want to change religions or something. And you will see exactly, you know, what is going on. Okay. And that's when you start noticing. Now, I don't know exactly what set these people off. Okay. Uh, maybe because uh, with my family, anything I did set them off. They, they never liked the fact that I was a very, you know, spiritual person. So that right there put me against them right there. Okay, I know my sister has been jealous and competitive um, of, of my my weight, which is ridiculous, but this is how she has been. You know, I, and, and going back to 2007, 2008, that time period, I remember her getting, you know, gastric bypass surgery and, and posting all kinds of little pictures of herself. And I was, at the time, I, I cared for my sister, so I was like, well, good for her. Good for her. You know what I mean? But in, in her mind, she was like, I just one-upped her. But of course, she got fat again, right? Anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm just laughing because it's like the, the, the kind of things that people will do and the sort of manipulative tricks that they'll look to pull just to have their little game competition. All right. But whatever the case is, I, I, I don't believe that most people have uh, the knowledge that they're supposed to have in these particular situations, in these particular fields or these, you know, I don't have the faith in people. I don't trust people anybody I mean absolutely anybody and anybody who's who's been a victim of human trafficking is not going to be trusting of anyone either you know I, I, I think that's pretty normal but anyway I've been going for about 30 minutes it's good for me to talk about these things um, I also notice that every time I tell the truth um, that I lose a subscriber like I said my videos are not for um, they're for other TIs but mainly they're for my perps okay they're for Karen Johnson and they're for Steve Murray they're for you know all these other people it's for the Lyles people now now it is it they are included in this thing because now I realize they're part of it it's for this information okay you're not hurting my feelings by um, unsubscribing but what you are doing you're confirming a fact because every single time I tell the truth, every time I hit home on something, I lose a subscriber because the truth hurts. I'm going to wrap up this video. I'll be back with another one later. Have a good night.